Praise the Lord, my dear friends. We are on the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Times and today in the first reading we come across a very interesting personality, King Zedekiah. We might have heard a saying, if you do not stand for something, you will fall for anything. And that's exactly what we see in this particular person, King Zedekiah. The background of the whole incident is that King Zedekiah, who is the king of Judah, had decided to go against the king of Babylon. Now, together with some neighboring countries, listening to the words of the royal officials, he asks help from the Egyptians and decides to go against the king of Babylon. However, the Lord had given a warning through prophet Jeremiah that it would not be okay and if he makes an alliance with the Egyptians, the country would be destroyed. But the king does not follow the instructions given to him by the Lord. But at the same time, we see this particular person as someone who is very interested in knowing what is the word of the Lord, but not courageous enough to put into action what the Lord demanded. In chapter 37 of the book of Jeremiah, verse 3, we have the king asking Jeremiah to pray for him to the Lord our God. But when Jeremiah prays for him and gets the word of God for him, he is not able to fulfill it. And interestingly, the royal officials get Jeremiah arrested. And the king does not stand against that decision. But after a while, he sends for Jeremiah and inquires of him if there is any message for him from the Lord. And Jeremiah once again tells him what the Lord actually expected from him. The Lord demanded that he should surrender to Babylon so that the country and the people would be spared. And for a while, the king listens to him and frees him from the prison and provides him with better shelter and food and so on. But after a while, in the very next chapter, chapter 38, we see some royal officials coming and saying to the king that this man Jeremiah should be put to death. Because of Jeremiah, the soldiers are losing their courage and so on. And we see the king saying, here he is, he is in your hands, for the king is powerless against you. The king knew very well that Jeremiah is revealing the decision of the Lord or the word of the Lord but the king does not have enough courage to stand for what he thinks is right and Jeremiah is arrested again and after a while we see again in verse 7 chapter 38 verse 7 Abedmelech comes and tells the king that it was a mistake to get Jeremiah arrested for the royal officials were wicked in their plans and here he changes his mind again and the king tells Abedmelech to get three men along with him and to free Jeremiah from the prison. And then when he meets Jeremiah, in verse 14, he asks again, I have something to ask of you. Do not hide anything from me. Tell me if the Lord has something to tell me. And there Jeremiah sincerely and openly tells everything that the Lord actually revealed to him regarding the king and the country. And once again, we see this king as a person who does not have the courage to stand for what is right. He does not have enough courage to stand against his royal officials in order to obey what the Lord demanded. And instead of obeying what the Lord told, he tells Jeremiah not to let anyone know that they had this conversation. And he even tells Jeremiah that if anyone would ask what exactly the king discussed with him, tell them that he had made a plea to the king not to send him back to the prison. And unfortunately, in the very next chapter, chapter 39, we see that the king of Babylon came and surrounded the country and arrested the king and carried away many as prisoners. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, freed Jeremiah and told the royal officials to make sure that Jeremiah had whatever he needed. Jeremiah was safe, probably because he trusted in the word of the Lord and acted according to the demands of the word of God. Whereas King Zedekiah, because he was afraid to stand for what was right, could not gather enough courage to go against his royal officials. My dear friends, we too can look into our own lives and see whether we have enough courage to stand for what is right when some occasions demand such courage. We see in the gospel Jesus saying, we should not think that he came to bring peace, instead he came to bring division. Of course, note that Jesus came to divide all of us into different groups and categories. Instead, 
if we take a firm decision to stand by the lord definitely there will be a lot of occasions where we will have to stand on our convictions which may result in some people speaking against us or some people losing their friendship with us and so on of course it does not mean that we need to hurt people or that we need to be arrogant towards people who do not agree with what we say and so on we definitely need to be gentle and humble simple at the same time we should be conscious on what conviction are we standing and that's why in isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 we have if you do not stand by me you do not stand at all or in another versions if you do not stand firm by the faith you do not stand at all and that's very true if we do not stand firm on our convictions we will find ourselves falling for every little distractions but once we are really convinced of what we believe once we are really convinced of our faith once we are really convinced of our love for god we will even be able to accept any difficulty or suffering that comes on our way because of our decision to practice our faith because we know the life that we live here on earth is not final there is a much more glorious life awaiting each one of us a life of communion with the lord and that is why we read in the letter to the hebrews in the second reading that jesus for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising all its shame once we realize that there is a great joy that is coming for us in the future because of our decision to stand by the lord we will definitely be able to stand firm in the convictions that we have in following the word of god may god bless each one of us